Chapter Twenty Eight of Bob's A Girl Detective. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Bob's A Girl Detective by Grace May North. Chapter Twenty Eight The House Party. Ralph and Dick were out on the wide, velvety lawns which surrounded the handsome, rambling summer house of the Cardwaller Corys. The gay awnings, palms, and boxes of flowers gave the house a festive appearance, while the many-coloured lanterns strung about the garden suggested that some merriment was planned for the evening. Mrs. Cadwaller Corey, who seemed very young to be the mother of a junior member of an ancient law firm, emerged from the house closely followed by Roberta Vandergrift. Bobs, in an attractive summer dress and wide-flowered wreathed hat, looked very different from the girl, who, while on the east side, dressed in a simple dark tailor-made suit and neat narrow-brimmed hat. "'Aren't your guests late, my son?' the hostess inquired. Ralph looked at his watch for the tenth time in as many minutes. "'They certainly are,' he replied. "'Late by a full hour now, and I am almost inclined to think that they had a breakdown.' they were coming in jack beardsley's tally-ho and he said he would time the drive from new york so they would reach us promptly at two thirty and now it is nearing four just at that moment a butler crossed the lawn and beckoning ralph to one side told him that someone awaited him at the telephone excusing himself the lad fairly ran indoors as he expected it was the voice of his friend jack beardsley that greeted him i say ralph are you alone so that no one will get wise to what i am going to say yes was the reply we don't want to worry her sister needlessly there is really no cause for that but we've been delayed at the orange hills inn because gwendolen vandergrift who isn't as strong as she thought has found riding in the tally-ho too hard she's got grit that girl has never complained but kept up as long as she could that she need not trouble any one until she keeled over and fainted she's better now and phyllis thought that if you would come over after her with a little runabout of yours made comfortable with blankets and pillows it wouldn't be as hard for miss vandergrift as this old tally-ho of mine mrs buscombe the innkeeper's wife will look out for her and so if you are coming we'll start along as i want to make the steep grade with this lumbering vehicle of mine before dark sure thing i'll get there all right i'll take a short cut through the hills so you won't pass me but don't be alarmed i'll probably get back here in the whiz as soon as you do in the tally-ho so i won't say anything to her sister roberta as yet so long again ralph was acting on impulse his first desire had been to take bobs with him but if he did there would not be room to make the invalid sister comfortable on the return trip and moreover it wouldn't be fair to dick his dad wouldn't arrive with the big car until five thirty and so the whiz would have to do sending word out to the group on the lawn that, that the tally-ho had been delayed but would soon arrive ralph donned his leather coat cap and goggles and made his way out through a back entrance and down to the garage soon thereafter he was speeding over a country road which led among the hills and was a short cut of many miles to the inn he broke the speed limit whenever the dirt road was smooth enough to permit him to do so but also he frightened many a flock of bird from hedges no one arose from the wayside tangled to bid him to go more slowly when he at last he arrived at the inn the kind mrs buscombe appeared and smilingly informed him that the young lady was quite rested and that the tally-ho had been gone for half an hour she was about to lead the way to the, into the dim old-fashioned parlour of the inn when the new arrivals delayed her and so ralph went in alone the blinds in the old-fashioned parlour of the inn were drawn and having come in from the dazzling sunshine ralph at first could scarcely see but a girl who had been seated in a haircloth rocker arose and advanced towards him she wore a rose-coloured linen hat and dress for a moment the lad paused and stared as though at an apparition bobs he ejaculated and then laughed as he extended his hand miss vandergrift honestly just for a second i thought that i was seeing a vision i had quite forgotten that you and your sister so closely resemble each other though to be sure you are taller than bobs but pardon me for not introducing myself i am ralph corey of whom perhaps you have heard and i am gwendolen vandergrift of whom i am sure that you have heard else you would not have come for me the girl smiled and to his amazement ralph found that his heart was pounding like a trip hammer if you are sure that you are rested miss vandergrift he said we will start back at once i've bought soft pillows galore and a jolly soft lap robe i hope you'll be comfortable on the porch of the inn gwen turned holding out a frail hand she said to the kindly woman thank you mrs buscombe for taking such good care of me i shall stop again on our way back to town the bustling little woman helped arrange the pillows and tucked in the blanket then to ralph she said as the machinery started do take care of the pretty dear it's like a flower she is and ought to be sheltered from the rough winds of the world 
I'll do that little thing, Miss Buscombe. Good-bye. Wish us luck. Ralph drove slowly at first, but Gwen said, I'm so well packed in pillows, Mr. Corey. It won't jar me in the least if you go faster. And so the speed increased. It was late afternoon, and the highway was deserted. I'd like to overtake the tally-ho, Ralph remarked. If I thought you wouldn't mind the pace, we'd have to hit. Gwendolen smiled trustingly. I have perfect faith in your driving, she said. I know you will take care of me. Ralph, looking into the face of the girl at his side, again had the strange feeling that it was Bob's, only different. And, oh, what was the matter with him, anyway? Was it possible that he liked the difference? Bob's had always been a frank comrade, more like another boy when he came to think of it, but this girl, who was equally beautiful, was depending upon him to take good care of her. A fifteen-minute spurt brought them at the top of the hill, and in the valley below they saw the tally-ho. Ralph stopped a brief moment on the plateau, leaped out to be sure that the whiz was in perfect condition, and then anxiously inquired, "'Are you sure you're game? Loop the loop won't be in it.' Gwen nodded. I like it, she assured him. The colour had mounted her cheeks, and her eyes sparkled. All right, hold fast, here goes. Then the whiz went like a red streak down that hill, on which, as Ralph had observed from the top, there was nothing to impede their progress. They overtook the tally-ho, and slowed up that they need not startle the horses. They had reached the outer boundaries of the Cadwalla Cory estate. "'Suppose I get back in the tally-ho with the others,' Gwen said. "'Then Bob's won't know that I had a fainting spell. "'If she knew it, she would feel that she ought to take me right home, and I don't want to go.' Her smile at Ralph seemed to imply that he was her fellow conspirator. "'I'm not going to let you go,' he heard himself saying. So the change was made. Ralph turned the whiz into the rear entrance, used only by delivery autos, and in that way reached the garage. He had asked Jack Beardsley to give him time to get out on the lawn before he arrived, and so the three, who were still seated around a tea-table under a spreading oak, saw Ralph coming from the house at the same time that the tally-ho entered the front gate. They dreamed little of all that had happened. End of chapter 28